A friend and customer named Nick couldn't resist this eBay special. It's a 1954 Harmony H44 Stratotone guitar. When it arrived, however, he found that the neck, which doesn't have a truss rod that you can adjust or any reinforcement in there, was so warped upward that he couldn't play it except with a slide and he doesn't play slide. Well, he talked to the seller and the seller gave him back some money, enough to get this fixed and straightened right and that's what I'm about to do. I think you're gonna love this guitar. I love this little acoustic bridge, <laughs> that's what it is. Miniature, it's much like any of the flat tops that they made back then, inexpensive ones with the metal tailpiece so there was no bridge pins, or glue jobs, nothing like that. And it's not a gold top, it's copper top copper all over and it's got a one piece neck going all the way through the body so it's neck through these wings are glued on I'm curious to see what kind of wood this is at the peg head it's very nuclear age look at that you have the atom with the musical note and stratotone that precedes stratocaster because these were made from 51 to 57 Richie Valens famous for La Bamba played this guitar you look him up online and you'll see him with it and I think a few years ago, Harmony reissued the Richie Valens signature model, H44, something like that. This was the real thing. In the early 50s, a lot of the inexpensive guitars especially didn't have truss rods. Not adjustable, not even a reinforcement. The little cheap guitars like this, they trusted the wood to hold and so didn't put anything in it. What I'm going to do is remove the fretboard and put some stiff carbon fiber down the neck inlay it in with the epoxy and then put the board back on. Carbon fiber is really strong. You can hardly bend that. You can bend it on this way a little bit, but I'm gonna stand it up like this, two of them, and that's really gonna stiffen the neck. So first I have to take off the fretboard. On the treble side, the binding has fallen off the edge. It's cracked and chipped and fell off in pieces. I can replace that later. But it's convenient because then I can see the joint and it gives me a place to enter with my knife. So I thought about this for a couple of days before starting and decided what I'm gonna do is clamp this to my bench and build a frame around it for routing with. The body's clamped, held pretty tight. I've got a scissor jack supporting the middle. Could be a block of wood. And I'm heating up my fingerboard iron. So I'm gonna start at the easiest part right up here That's it. It's like completely a dry joint. I like to work one knife on top of the other, always feeling like I'm over the wood that way. I can hear it separating, but I am going to use a little heat. So my block of aluminum is heated up to about 250 now on the top surface. I figure it's probably hotter on the bottom. And that's enough from my experience to get this board a little bit warmer and help break that old dry hide glue, which is what I think this must be. Whoa, that was the whole section that let loose there. Each time I get another half an inch or an inch. Never hurts to have a little hot water around. That's putting some upward pressure on it. Sometimes it'll just pop off. This could even be scary. Picking up glue now, because I'm using a hot knife. In real life, right now, this has probably taken us 45 minutes. I thought this was gonna pop off in 20 seconds. It was loose enough up here. I could see into that crack, but I didn't anticipate this down here. I think that water and heat's helping it. Here we go. Mercy. Poplar. I kind of guess it would be poplar. It's clean. This is a scientific glue test of you light the glue and smell it. This is hide glue. When you get into glues, you'll know it's super glue has its own smell, type on. That's old high glue. I've clamped the fingerboard face down on a 10 inch sanding beam. That's the radius. That'll keep it flat, let it cool off, and keep it from being up curled because I did so much up curling when I took it off. Now I can clean off the bench and set up my router table. 
Okay, we're about to route. This is my setup. Big clamp here holding it tight. A web clamp off the neck jigs. Got the body down. We're on the spacer blocks. Got my platform screwed to the table. Underneath that neck is a scissor jack to hold it up in the middle. At this end, I took a couple of spool clamps, took the top spool off, drilled two holes in the bench, ran it up through this piece of wood, and that's pulling down the peg head nice and tight so that I got it neck straight maybe even into a little bit of a back bow. That's where I want to route this thing. I'm going to use the Otter Router, which is a new product that I really like. It's got a lot of area on it, so it's very steady. That's a really sharp carbide bit. I'm going to cut about an eighth of an inch deep at a time. And it's attached into this router with the quarter inch to eighth inch router adapter that we sell. And I'm ready to route. Now I'll move the fence over so I can route the slot on the treble side. Cut number two. I'll be about a quarter an inch deep, I think. I'm sorry if I'm yelling. <laughs> I bet I am. And cut some rods to fit end to end and glue them in. Now I'm going to break down the setup here. So I can get at the neck and clamp the rods in with some glue, and I do them one at a time. This stuff dries like hide glue, it has a lot of the same properties because it's an animal collagen glue, fish instead of horses. I use the clamp to squeeze it down below the surface until it bottoms out where it's out. Doesn't hurt if I wet the neck a little bit, cleaning up that glue. They're perfect below, just below the level of the fretboard. And if there's any glue residue left over, it doesn't matter because fish glue bonds with hide glue and it bonds to itself because it rejuvenates from hot water. That's it. I have to wait overnight and put the fingerboard on tomorrow. I can't wait. I replaced the binding on the treble side because it was missing before gluing this on. It's easier now than it would be later. And I'm just putting some hot water on this wood so it'll draw in the glue a little bit better. Now. I like to keep the brush a little bit wet and hot. The advantage of this fish glue is it's just about as great as a hot high glue, but it has a longer open time. I'd be scared right now if this was high glue, it'd be cooling off. There you go. I'm not in a hurry now because it, it'll take a few seconds till it tacks up. I took two eight inch long, 10 inch radius fretboard sanding blocks, found a center line and cut them to the exact shape of the fingerboard on center. That's gonna be my gluing call. In fact, it's going to be a gluing call for years to come. I've got a, a number of these with different radii. I'm not squeezing really hard. I'm trying to keep those clamps nice and square because if you get out of kilter, the pressure of the clamp tightening will draw the board to one side or the other. This one's going perfect. That's it. Whew. I'll let this dry till tomorrow and woohoo, it's straight. Waited overnight, cleaned up that binding. I've got a straight edge on it that's got a little bit of relief. It's a straight neck thanks to the carbon fiber rods and a good glue job. I'm curious to see how it sounds. I know it'll sound old. <laughs>